meeting order April 18th. Uh, obviously, we do not have any public comments, so let's get up there. We've got any announcements from anybody else? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I guess this would be a good time. We did, you know, we're in the middle of the car, RFP. Um, kind of give you an update. The, uh, they came and did their presentations this past Wednesday. Uh, we've got three really good to choose from. We're working with finance and some of the back end stuff. But I can't say a whole lot just yet until we kind of get to that point. But just so you know, we uh, over the next, I would say, week, we should be able to uh, kind of let you guys know where we're at and get and get it right in order. Uh, we just found out that we that doesn't mean I'm really going to school that this board has to support you. Get to that point out and all the, the details, and, and we'll make that decision soon. So, uh, but yeah, we're very happy with the thank you heard. That moment. There he is. Could you send the link to Jesse Ramos? He's he doesn't have a link to get in, he wants to sign in. It's the same every time. He was on teams last time. It's telling me he's the one from last time. You know, actually, your calendar should just go forward that invite. But he probably already has it. We're turning in. Double click on the actual, yeah, double click on the right there. Yeah, there we'll double click. Put okay. your alpha up to eight. There he is. Yeah. Yeah. He tried that one, but nobody let him in. Washington said it did. Let me go back in again. Yeah. Go to top the right arrow, right arrow, top left. Stop. Yeah. Parents. Hey, Ramos. Pop up. Okay, should we get another link? It might have been that nobody let him in because we were paying attention. Oh, no, I said it. Yeah, there it I was reading that. It's like <laughs> nonsense. That <laughs> should be uh, it. <laughs> Rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> Principal. 
world. I mean, did he say anything else? Sorry, I think my mic wasn't working there for a second. In a wrong waiting. Those are the one I said. Yeah, go, go up. Yeah, he was there. He was here up there. Did he just get a new link? Just click that share invite. You could put in his. Maybe, can you call him real quick? Yeah, I can call him. Go up to the share invite up above. Up down. Either one. Up there. Like he's in there now. <laughs> they're gonna send you a bank. Hold on, I think they have you now. Okay, yep, they're getting you in now. Okay, I'm in. Thank you. Hey, can you hear us? Yeah, I can. Sorry, guys, I did. I apologize. No, all good. Glad you got it figured out. All right. Do you want to recap a little bit then? Yeah, Jesse, I was just letting them know we uh, just a quick update on the carts. We uh, this past Wednesday, the, we had three vendors come in and give presentations. Uh, they were all really good presentations that, that we have uh, some good options to choose from. So we, we just found out that this board has the power to approve that RFP. We don't have to take it in front of city council. Um, so once we get some of the over the next few days, get some of the Back end stuff done where I can share that information with you. Um, I'll do so and then we can vote to, uh, to select which vendor we're going to go with. So I'll have that information to you guys very soon. All right, thanks. All right, in the continuation. Uh, approve the minutes for February 21 of this current year, 2023. Do we have a motion for that? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes from February 21st. Do a second. Second. Oh, can you pull it just a little bit? Oh, okay. Helps more. There we go. Thank you. All right. We do have a motion on the floor and second. And all in favor say aye. And aye. Jesse? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. All right. Uh, the next item would be the continuation of our business from uh, our previous uh, special meeting and concerning membership rates. And we'll do a presentation from Jesse on that in terms of yeah, where yeah. we stand currently. Can you pull up the, uh, the presentation I had from last time? Yeah. That's, that's all the recommendation. I'll does anybody on the board have anything else they would like to suggest that we would go to versus the one that was a $12 and uh, an increase of, I believe it was $13 for, for the uh, equipment surcharge? Yeah, every every category would go up $12. Couples, except for couples, they would go up like, you know, 12 people. Um, and then the uh, equipment fee would go from 37 to the proposal from, from staff. Juniors didn't go up. Oh, juniors did not go up. Sorry. Any further discussion about whether to go ahead and continue the junior membership or no? We're using the uh, the app that is currently available to the juniors. No, I mean the. The feedback I've gotten, so what, what he's talking about, so everybody knows, we have the golf marathon where every junior, anyone under the age of 18, scans a barcode and they play for free. And then golf marathon, we send them an invoice at the end of the month. They pay us seven dollars for every round. Um, the option that we have for the junior membership is ten dollars and eighty-one cents. And uh, kind of the question is, why do we why do we have that when we kids are playing for free and playing more than once? It's more it's more beneficial for us. Uh, the only response I've gotten from staff is that there are parents that just don't want to deal with that. They just would rather pay the $10 and not have to mess with all that. 
it's not a big deal. You just can't mark them. It takes about one minute and get a free round of golf. Uh, I guess that would be kind of what would be the board's pleasure, whether we'd like to discontinue that or continue as is. Yeah, I think if it's a convenience for some people, and that's what they want to do, and that's available to them, but also it's available to scan the barcode. And right. So you actually have an option. And I, I think that probably creates the best scenario. You can do either or. What was the number? How many junior members are there? Like 70 or? Um, junior 74. 74 that pay then, and we have a ton that use the. Yes, any comments? No, no comments at all here. There's no, you know, body complaining about it either way. I would say that no need to change. And a change to juniors wasn't part of the original proposal, right? No, that, that one would not change. No, it was just a discussion that came up in the interim time. The other so. question I have is, have we discussed and settled on an effective date and how we're getting this implemented? I believe so, uh, the way it has to go is that once the board passes, uh, whatever it is that we choose to go with, and then they need a 30 day notice to send out to existing memberships before you can make any potential changes. And then after that fact, persons that buy a membership after that particular probation time would then be subject to the new rates. And those who have existing memberships, they would be grandfathered through tell their anniversary date, whichever time, uh, or whether they, if they were <laughs> bought it just so today, it would be a year from today. Their first anniversary. So, yeah, yeah. Well, kind of, to throw a hypothetical out, if we set it for May 1st, then on May 1st, anyone that signs up would sign up at the new rate. Anyone that was in their first year of their membership would continue that until their one year anniversary uh, with a notice. And then, um, Anyone past that first year of their membership would go to the next, go to the new rate after the, the notice. We have to give it 30 days notice. So it would not go to their anniversary date for anybody that's been on for more than a year. It would just go in back yeah, after the first year, you're month to month at that point. Um, so it's, yeah, you're not under another year contract, you're month to month at that point. So we would just need to give them a notice. Uh, I don't know if it's 30 or 60 days. Well, we kind of figure it out. We'll just sort of see. We just want to make sure that we provide sufficient notice to not cause trouble for people. And we do need to, as discussed a few times, basically just try to honor our contractual agreements and not like make people angry as we make changes. So, okay. not as legal, maybe at that point. Well, like if there is a change to be made, we need to figure out what that change is going to be. The next right behind that, we need to pick up effective date. There's no issues as far as implementing it into the software system. That's no issues. There's a lot of <laughs> so more. <laughs> well, and I think maybe something that since we haven't done this in a while, depending on how aggressive the timeline could be, some other options are just like leaving space for administrative difficulties, more or less like what we did with the special meeting, kind of coming to the same conclusion of if we need to change effective dates or this or that, or you know, providing some room depending on what the increases are. In my opinion, uh, we do need to be careful because we did have some feedback. That was what I got as feedback on the other proposal was the fact that uh, it was just, maybe they just misunderstood, but they were worried about whether we would inform them correctly or not. And so I do believe we need to put a, a good enough space in there to say, well, you know, amply of, informed of intention. So, yeah, we we can use several platforms to make sure the information gets out. We can obviously post it in the clubhouses. We can use the send the email out to all the members. Use the app that we have. Um, social media is I don't know if that's a good idea. We could put it on social media, but we can use every app that we have to make sure everyone not caught off guard by that. Well, that's. We see over during our special meeting, uh, Channel 3 was here, so they had that on the 10 o'clock news that evening. 
and they said we were going to increase it by twelve dollars. Yeah. So it's already out there. I never got any feedback whatsoever after the special meeting. I, I asked, don't know if anybody else did or not. I asked just a lot of people at the golf course and got very, very little kickback. Everybody was like, they totally understood. Uh, half of a green fee per month, basically, if the green fee is $25, it's a half of a green fee per month. So uh, most of the people I talked to did not have any issues with it at all. But that's just the people I was talking to. So even I too was well talked to several folks in my club and they said, you know, as, as long as the money's going to the, to the courses, making sure that the courses are getting in good shape and, and taken care of, they're all they're good to go with. Yes, see, and I had checked JSN had that on their Facebook page. There really weren't any negative comments. There were no comments. So, yeah, the feedback was got yeah. along the same lines. It's still an unbelievably good deal and yes. already starting to see improvements to the golf courses. So that's some of that feedback, but I also got a few who were like, let's just say they don't trust us yet. They don't trust us that that money is going to make the courses better because the course I play primarily at Sim and it's in very rough shape. And so their concern is really my 12 bucks a month is going to go up and I'm not going to see a whole lot better golf course. So I think we really have to sell this when we, I mean, yeah. inform is one thing, inform and give rationale is something else. And I think we just have to try to build trust because we don't have it from a lot of people. What are you saying about the new clubhouse or the mods of the clubhouse? You know, the, the sim clubhouse looks nice, but it doesn't matter nearly as much to people as the course. I want to, uh, when's the last time you played? Today. Today. Okay. So on Thursday, they they finally got the well, the liner in the well. He said he put water on the golf course really for the first time. He's not had an option. So we, I put a video out trying to stress that. Yeah, it was great. So, I mean, we, we definitely understand Sim is not where it should be. We were just had to replace up to 50 foot well. Kind of stuck, so. And a couple of the ladies today commented on that because we were playing on very wet ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he called me the next day and said, You're going to get some complaints. I'm like, what? Now he goes, Of course, it's too wet. That's part of it. <laughs> it's real wet, but nobody's, you're right. That isn't the complaint that I got. The surveys there's areas that you wet down dirt. <laughs> you know, grass isn't going to just miraculously grow there. Anyway, that's another topic. But those are the people who kind of don't trust us quite yet. So, and it, it, I'll be very honest, it may be kind of a gender thing. I just don't know that women golfers are as confident in the culture. As perhaps. They don't have as much wherewithal to go play golf. And so a $12 increase to them. To a lot of them who are on a fixed income, it's significant. There is those those problems. Excuse me, those problems that pop up at Sim Park. The irrigation system itself is obviously outdated and is not functioning correctly due to the fact the gears and wear and tear. Uh, they are the first on the agenda for CIP money. We hope uh, in terms of a total replacement. Now the system that's in there is a system that was designated basically for teeth, greens, and fairways. It doesn't really have irrigation in the perimeter areas. So being a sand-based golf course it is, during these kind of periods of time, you're not going to have a lot of vegetation in the outlying areas. Now, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't provide a very fine fairway from tee to green uh, and be equitable to everybody else uh, in terms of, of playability. Yeah, so, I mean, we've been very spoiled. I've been a member of the Sim Ladies Club for 18 years and we've compared our course to the country clubs. I mean, all that time, it's been, a, it's been great. Fairways have been great. Greens have been great. And all of a sudden, last year, they weren't. Yeah, so uh, there's a little, uh, there's a little, there's a little sensitive. Yeah. I can agree with that because, and, and it's basically was irrigation problems. Sure. Uh, and 
without irrigation, I think you just even if it's Bermuda grass, it's going to have a difficult time putting a surface down there that you think is what you want to play off of, which they did get probably a little overindulged in terms of how great the fairways were because the Bermuda grass came back from the years ago that we initially put it in and lost it to winter kelping. But in the last few years, I mean, it's really been a very routine green there. And due to the fact that we did lose the irrigation, I think probably, if I was a guest, Jesse will take a look at some of those areas and we may have to throw a little sod down and see if we can enhance how quick that recuperates. And I'm, I'm going to talk more about it in a minute, but we've already started identifying areas to sod and back in soon. Um, we've got, but we, there's no sense until we have water. So, yeah. I think all that needs to be sure, sure. explained. And your videos are great. I think I hear a lot of people say they, were, they saw the video, they like the video. We just have to realize there are going to be some people who are going to say, 12 bucks? No, I'm not paying an extra 12 bucks for a crap bowl of course. I haven't seen the videos. Where are they? Facebook. 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 Ah, okay. No wonder. You don't follow us? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so far, anyway. <laughs> we certainly didn't have a budget for good accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of Sam, what about That's McDonald's? Right. I mean, are we, I mean, I played there this morning, and there's still some bad spots in the fairways. Are we looking at, uh, I don't know, plugging some of the Bermuda into those bad spots out there to get it growing again? I know we sucked the ponds down dry, so it looks like they're yes, just. We, I want to talk about all this. Stuff. So, but yeah, it's, we we are identifying areas that we can saw and we can plug. Okay. Um, just, again, it needs to come out of dormancy, and then um, it's hard to do in the drought. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to do these things, but yeah, we we are definitely working on plans. So, the grass really over the last two weeks, the Bermuda has just started to be it's, to go from yellow to mostly green now. So. Uh, there's not much you can do with it until it's out of normal and growing. So, right. So, Mike mentioned something about uh, CIP money. Is that something that we will know sometime this summer? We just had this discussion. We haven't heard anything yet. And apparently, typically, everyone that has been here for a while would have thought we would have heard something now. So, I expect something over the next couple. Of now, I'm not saying we'll know if we have it. We'll know. I don't know. It's my first time in the process, but apparently it's taken longer than normal to get some kind of feedback. Make sure yeah, well, I was good. just I was reading an article where they're going to put six million dollars into a pickleball complex. Now, so I mean, more courses. They can put some money into that. Sure. City budget. Uh, so you got them just a hair off the topic. Going back to the to the uh, membership rates. I did put a kind of a quick pencil to the uh, $13 that we discussed, and I don't think that that quite equates to what the uh, regular green fee player is paying in terms of, of money for the pool. Uh, I personally would like to see us add about five bucks to it, but that's just me for the year and go to about $18 to make it a little bit more equitable. Can you figure that? I mean, you would have to know how many rounds a person plays in order to that's how do you well we know how many rounds are, are daily fee plays that's 95 out now you can't go by the rounds that a, a membership person is playing you go by what is the total amount for the fund would be if three memberships you're saying members donate half of it green fee players that donate yeah half of it. that's all i'm saying just make it equitable for everybody a little bit more anyway. Obviously, the person with a with a membership is playing substantially more than a daily fee player. But in terms of the overall pot, for getting enough money to buy equipment and uh, price some equipment lately, and it doesn't come cheap, and it's getting worse. I and mean, I'm sure Jesse's got some information on that that we could go through. But I personally would like to entertain just making that 18 rather than 13. Thirty-seven to fifty-five. Could we go thirty-seven to fifty-five dollars? Yeah. That's annual, right? That's, that's the annual. That's just that annual. Time. It's just another five dollars here. Paul, I believe. Yeah. 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 
What do you think, Marcy? <laughs> Lots of splaining to do to my folks. That's I know. I know. We all have to do that. So, but uh, again, that rolls back to quality. Of course, if your machines won't work, you can do other thing you want, but it just doesn't help that much if you, if you can't do the, the routine maintenance to keep it up. Where's that maintenance charge right now? Uh, Thirty-seven. Go to fifty-five. It's eighteen dollars. Average golfer plays once a week, they're paying 50, basically, because they pay a dollar a round, correct? Yeah. That's cheaper than a, I'm just looking at it from a, from the categories, lining them up. I mean, we got in the equitability when we were discussing green fees and what we were doing, so. And like I say, we are in dire needs of, of equipment. Jesse bought what six pieces of equipment this year and eight. Eight. Six screens of ours, a sprayer, and a big workman. That yeah, was. $7,000, and at best, we'll get 200000 in the pot for the year. That's, that's been really optimistic. Although that we talked about it, the special meeting had $37 built into it, and that wasn't a change. It was, it went to 50. Yeah, we had suggested to 13. That's what I said. 37 to 50, dollars. and now you're suggesting consider 37. Yeah, only because I put the pencil to it. I thought it was pretty equitable until I put a pencil on it. So. We could go around and around for two hours like we did a couple of times. Because we, we have reason to raise it as high as we want, but it's just finding that convenient. Even at those rates, we're going to have to be careful and selective how we purchase equipment. There's just no way around it. As he's done a great job with carts, but it's uh, it's very difficult. I mean, we scour the market for used equipment. That, but if you're buying something that's got four thousand hours on it or something, that's like buying a car with two hundred fifty thousand miles on it. I mean, what are you buying? Just a suggestion. Open for motion, or we can just go with with what we had uh, on the, the original discussion. When you compare the rates that we have, Wichita, to the surrounding communities, like just said, Keston, Newt, um, you know, we're still quite a bit less than what's being charged. Substantially less. So I, I, can I, think if, numbers. I think if we use that kind of messaging out there, plus the fact that we're improving the course, moving the clubhouse, then we should have a pretty good you know, marketing piece of information to pass around. The key part of this to being successful falls on my failure to get the courses where they are supposed to be. I fully understand and expect the fact that I have to do that. Um, Problem is, you gotta have that money to do that. It's not like we can throw all this money in until we get it. So, when, you know, with, to that fear of the money's not gonna go back to the course, I don't know how to get around that. Trust, I guess. But, yeah, I mean, as you said, we're, it, it, the rates are compared to anybody and we're cheaper. Everything else is not staying the same. We're getting cheaper. Everything else is going up. I mean, in our industry, it's stuff's doubled over the last five years. So, golf is kind of a strange industry, anyway. When you come buying chemicals, the farmer will buy a bag of fungicide, for instance, and he pays ten bucks. Says for golf course, on that you pay fifty. And that's just the way it is. A trash can that's and they write twenty five bucks at Lowe's is two hundred eighty dollars in golf catalog. Yeah, yeah, I'll exactly. give you. It's crazy. Yeah, that's just the way it is. And, and, and the sad part about it, for chemicals and those kind of things, is the government won't allow you to buy what the farmer does. They legislate that out, so you have to pay that cost. And if you get caught going off label. 
I mean, you get suspended licenses and fines, and it's just not a, a happy side sometimes. So, anyway, we're kind of again wandered off topic a little bit. Yeah, I mean, if you crunch the numbers, as, as you're talking about crunching numbers, you're talking about affecting approximately 1,800 fastest now? Seven, a little bit about that. Yeah, 1,722. Oh, okay. 17. So you'd be affecting 1,700 people, $5 a pop. You're talking, you're making under 10 grand. Yeah, well, I, when you're I put not, the pencil to it, that brought not, you up pretty close. Yeah. Make enough to buy a piece of equipment or anything like that. I totally get it, and I'm not personally against this at all, but other people don't get the benefit of this discussion. And so what they're looking at is you just raised my cart fees, you're going to raise my monthly fee, and now you're going to bump my annual fee by 18 bucks. That's all they're looking at. You know, what I found with working with membership organizations is that whenever you make an administrative change, all anybody looks at is how does that affect me? And, and that's just the reality of it. So we just have to make sure we sell it right. I think, and I'm not quite sure what that is, but Jesse's doing a great job of decisions we're making, or at least we're making it. And the trust has to be rebuilt. That's all I'm saying. I'm, I'm not against this. I, I get it that we have to do it, but I just think we have to be very cautious. There, there is likely going to be some attrition, and the attrition will be more among women golfers than it will be among men. There, before we started the meeting, we've gained 119 members in the last pretty much five weeks. Um, probably every category is, is one of them. So um, I do expect we're going to lose on a principle uh, that you know they feel, but I think there's a you know a lot of people that are on uh, memberships as we make the improvements and just golf is just going crazy. So I think that was one. Coming up with this twelve dollar proposal, I think I was trying to figure out. Are we as a staff are trying to figure out where where is that line where we're not? You're going to lose some people if you raise it fifty cents. Actually, it goes up only. Can't help that. But where where is that line where we can still benefit and, and start doing some of the things we need without taking the right way and going from going up forty bucks, we, we would have lost half our membership. So trying to find that. Again, I think we need to listen to our staff too when they're. Putting that number out there when they see how many tea times every single day and every single weekend are being taken by members, that public rate isn't being able to be taken advantage of, even though the public rate is still very affordable as well. No matter what your decisions are, bottom line is golf's kind of an expensive game. <laughs> We try to provide it at the best possible rate that we can and still provide a product. You always have to have a product or not going to play it anyway. So, so we're at a point where probably we need to entertain some kind of a motion here, be it uh, raise the $12 across the board for the fees plus a $12 and a $13 increase on the annual for the equipment or the $12 and $18, whatever it is, could be the, the will of the board. Jesse, <laughs> any comment? Um, I'm, I'm just listening right now, so. <laughs> <laughs> I understand what Marsh is saying about yeah. you're raising card fees. Now you're going to raise the monthly dues. Now you're going to raise it. And that's, that is all valid. Equipment fee, an extra to go 18 instead of 13 or whatever. One time payment per year. Not seem like that big of a deal to me. Because it's a one time payment. I guess is why I don't feel like it's an insurmountable thing, but I mean, we're going to raise it anyway. We're going to raise it $13. If we're going to raise it 13 we might as well raise, we it. raise it. Yeah, it's kind of where I was going with that. Uh, 
you guys want, we can go ahead and make a motion, or do you guys want to chat about it some more? I'd... I'm willing to entertain. I'm good to go. I mean, I think we've discussed it. Motion being, uh, I would make a motion that we go ahead and implement the suggestion by the staff, the pros, and Jesse, and to increase the monthly fee twelve dollars for all the categories except for the couples, which would be eighteen dollars. To move the equipment fee, that is an annual fee, taken out in November to fifty-five dollars. Uh, yeah. No change for juniors. No, no, no change for juniors. I, um, the only other thing I was wondering about was, can we put a stipulation in there that people can make an annual payment as opposed to monthly payments? I would be okay with that. I don't want to offer any type of discount for doing that, but I'm fine if they want to pay. No, I just want to all the. Uh, That a problem with the software system? Current system? Probably. Okay. Um, <laughs> you do that in Club Profit. If you had to create another class category. Uh, it's an issue. No big deal. Well, we can, I can, if that is an option with the software, I'm okay with doing it. If it's not, when we get the new software, we could implement that. <laughs> Isn't part of the issue your membership is one year and then it's month to month? So it would only be one time at the beginning. But after that, you're on a month anyway. You're not in a contract. At the end of the year, there you would put an expiration date on that one. So it would just when they go to install the green fee, it would charge them. Or when they go to make up, yeah. now they would charge them a green fee, and they would know what's done for you. That's not part of this motion. Um, no, I was just asking the question. The motion is that we go. Well, well, across the board, with the exception of the couples, which would be 18. And we would raise the equipment fee to the total sum of $55. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Second. Wait, 55? 55. Just wrote it down. It was 18. We were going to go 50, and now we're going 55. Okay, we'd have a uh, motion and a second. All in favor, we'll raise your hand so we make sure we get the right people. I'm going to go. All right. Aye. All right. Motion carries. Okay. Next is a obviously. Well, the, let's real quick. Let's talk about a start date on that. Oh, I'll need to know when yeah. that goes into effect. Uh, today is the what 18th. I would. I would. In order to make sure that we get failing, in other words, we make sure that we, everybody's informed. I would be inclined to go through the rest of this month in May. June first, June one. Anybody got another suggestion? I would say start to put the emails out almost immediately, letting people yeah. know. Right, right. I mean, it's kind of like Robert said, though it was it was on Channel Three News or whatever. Right. So it, it's out there; people know about it. I think what I would like to do is. And the rest of this week, playing around with the software, make sure we know exactly how that needs to look. And then, wait, as soon as next week, we can start putting out the information, making everyone aware. And then June 1st, it goes into effect. Anyone that's past their first year, June 1st, their payment would be for the new amount. Anyone brand new, and then beyond that, every month as people exit their first year, they would bump up. Me. Yeah, and I think maybe we just interpret the motion that was just approved as begin implementation and make it be consistent with the schedule. Thanks, Jesse. Yes. Right. The goal of beginning the grandfather May 1st, 30 days. Be June 1st. So June 1st is. Yeah, grandfather until it actually is an act. Or you, you set the date when your price goes. So then July 1st would be for the. June, June 1st, or anyone that's passed their first year. You buy a, yeah, if you buy a ticket on June 1st, if you don't have one, then it's the new fee. Yeah. So we should tell people to hurry up. 
required membership now. Well, basically, you only have an end of May yeah. queue in for a year. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They are. They are. We are. We are. Yeah, in flux. <laughs> But I, I think not having a date does provide some flexibility just in case sure. things happen to. So I, I think that does work well for us, but if anybody had issues with my interpretation. Well, so, cool. yeah. <laughs> it people. Just to clarify, we're not talking about June 1st now, new contract starts, you know, lock in for a year on that. They're still month to month after yeah, the June 1st. If, if they've they been banned on for a long time. But, well, but as we discussed at the last meeting, those month to months are not going to keep continuing. We're going to provide notice that you have about two months left. Yeah. And then we are not going to keep renewing on a month to month. You have to sign up. If that's how it works, that's we capture those month to month ones at the end. So with the three categories, right, we've got new folks, which is pretty straightforward. We've got folks who have annual memberships currently. Um, so they will stay on that annual membership until it completes. So anywhere from like one day to one day less than 12 months. And then our third category are the folks who are continuing to be on month to month agreements. And those continue not just based on the member agreeing to, but also us agreeing to continue with the month to month. So usually what we do and kind of what we talked about at the last meeting anyway, and apologies if I was too quick on that, was we provide about two months notice for those month to month folks. So they've got a little bit more lead time and then they have to start paying an annual membership and come to another agreement with us after that. Renew that one year membership. Exactly. At the current rate, basically. Okay. So basically if it runs out and it stays choose to go with it rather than just charging the new rate on a monthly basis they have to buy a yearly contract yes basically yeah. um, instead of just continuing which i think is generally kind of good contract practice instead of letting people sort of like that's supposed to provide people some time at the end of the contract to maybe have some flexibility to then sign a new one instead of maybe being on a month-to-month -month contract for like three years or something like that so that's kind of the and it, seeing some confusion too, so happy to answer kind of questions on that. I've been a member for five years. The new rate goes into effect. I have to basically terminate that membership and sign a new one for a three-year contract. Well, once your membership is completed. So we don't want the situation basically where someone's membership lapses because their annual contract say ends in September. So this person in September, they'll keep paying the current rates until. But we don't want the situation where it's kind of a loophole where then, oh, I'm just going to stay month to month on this contract. Um, which is currently what we let folks do because we don't have membership rate changes. So we could, like when we do the 2% annually, it automatically, we don't renew the contract, stay month to month. But that's part of the agreement. So the 2% increase is already included as the part of the agreement that is signed by someone. And that also applies to the month to month. So it's different when we increase it separate from it's on this, but can we do a specific example? I've been a member for Yeah, no, of course. Yeah. It'll be a couple of months past June 1st, and then I'll be asked to sign a new contract at the new rate for one year. So I think maybe let's kind of tease out the example a little. So let's say, like, when does your current membership? Okay, let's just go with August. <laughs> okay, so it, it, or let's go December because it's farther out. So I think that maybe will prove the point a little bit. You would pay your current rates until the end of December because that's the agreement that you signed with the city. That's the agreement the city signed with you. Um, but that's only if you've signed that annual member, like that's on your annual membership. The current annual memberships have a provision that says once that agreement ends, you can stay on a month to month. It's kind of a weird thing in our membership. agreements. So we don't want the situation then where people are just staying on their month to month membership afterward. And paying the current rate. Are we on the question right now? I don't think that doesn't make sense. Don't we still on the month to month because we've been on for years. We're all on the month to month. Oh, my apologies. I thought you were signing up annually. 
And that's not been an issue because we have not changed rates. So there hasn't been kind of an issue. But if you if. So the way we are setting it up, and I guess if we want people that are staying on month to month to not pay increased rates, is that no, no, they still pay. Right. That, that's what I'm suggesting. If we do not do that, people can stay on the month to month and not pay the increased rate we are at. Yeah. Okay. Uh, basically, what he's saying is this 12 months, you know, for the annual contract. So once they've completed that 12 months, it'll normally automatically renew to month to month, but instead it just it stops it from continuing on that current one. And then they have to sign up for the new membership. And we can't change month to month prices. Without having people sign a new agreement, we have. Haven't we in the past? I've paid like two percent. That was that is part of the agreement, agreement but that's, already. Yes, but that's part of the current agreement. So yeah. when we get the new agreement with the new price, that's new beyond price, the two percent. It'll be so June first. You'd have to sign a new contract. Well, it's just a completely new contract altogether. Once that twelve months is I feel like that will create more attrition. People will realize, you know, I don't play much anyway. I didn't know that was, I, mean, I misunderstood that as well. I thought rate would just go up, they would stay in that month to month status. But because the month to month is connected to the old contract. We have to and have the old contract includes the 2%, but not anything above. How is that worded, the 2%? It's just a provision right at the end that says subject to a 2% annual. It doesn't say 2%, 2%, it specifically says, um, uh, okay. it, it, does, it does, but it, uh, it says it's, it's not, you don't have to. No, yeah. but it also does, it says there's some wording that it's not absolutely 2%. It could be more or less the way it's worded, I think. I think it says subject to, I think, I think it's the 2% is pretty specific. So it's really open to interpretation. But it just says, I think it just says subject to a 2% annual increase. Yeah, what it used to say is no more than 2% when we signed up years ago. Yeah. They have since changed the verbiage. All of this. So again, the people that are on the month of month, that is going to automatically cancel June 1st. That, and so everybody that's on the month of month would have to sign a new contract. June 1st or when the contract ends, and I don't have to put my contract. Yeah. Be June first. Because all members in search of the for somebody to do so. Oh, yeah, I know it's safe. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what you sent me. So I've got the contract. It's the last sentence is all memberships are subject to the two percent annual starting in July 2020 and every year. But so, okay. so, what you're saying Nate, is throwing out that contract. A new one. At some point, we need to close that contract. Hey, yeah, that's what we're trying to do. That's the verb. Is that that current contract will end June first. If you want to sign up again, whatever. At the point until and yeah, right now, sign unless they're under a year. But they're going to have to eighteen hundred dollars. I thought it was just going to go automatically increase on a certain date, and it was, they just go right to the $12. But if they got to sign on a contract, that's asking a little bit more for them to think about. Is there a way for them just to agree to the new prices? Um, is the contract, or is that not reasonable? Yeah. Amendment to your file? Uh, I mean, if you. Do things like offer, I guess, continued month to month options. I mean, this seems more an issue with kind of the annual membership fee. If a lot of people are in month to month, it's kind of hard to like keep track and like, why do we have an annual membership? Then, sort of, point, like, probably 90% are on month. And then, okay. Then, if that's the issue, and part of this again is we just we need to basically change. We can. 
mean, we can basically offer a month to month option for people, but it's like income and maybe have to like sign a new agreement. The point is, I think the, the worry is 1500 people in one day are going to have to suddenly. Uh, I, under, I, I understand that, but those are based on agreements where like they would have to agree to these price increases regardless. And if we'd like to offer a month to month option, that's totally fine, but we can't. We don't have a structure in place to offer a month to month option. Do we offer a month to month to the for a new agreement. To the elapsed ones after a year, do we have to offer to everyone? Like, could a new member say I only well, want? Exactly. So that's kind of why it needs to be more. We don't have really a built in upfront option for agreement. Okay. And maybe that's something we can explore during the implementation yeah, as well. We were under the impression that it wasn't everyone status would stay the same. They wouldn't have to sign a new contract. It's just the rates would go up. Like with my cell phone, if the rates go up, it just goes up. Can you not do something? Right. If their contracts are written. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the impression. Yeah. No, no. I, I, I understand. I mean, I'm reading this part about a $300 cancellation fee because I'm now re-obligated for a year. If that language is going to be the same in the new contract, you're going to get some people that might say, okay, that new rate, I'm not sure I can handle it. I don't want to commit for a year. And right now I'm on month to month. You see what I'm saying? I do see what you're saying. If we would like to offer a month to month option up front, that is fine. That is not a membership structure that we currently have as an option. Up front. It says we'll continue month to month. You have to offer to if we are increasing the rates and having people sign up for that, then we are having folks sign a new agreement. You saying we have to terminate that completely and put them on a whole new Yeah, basically. I mean, and like basically agreeing to. I mean, and I, I need to like look into these options. It's not quite like what we normally do in these situations, but. I mean, yeah, so like month of the month option up front. Uh, we can also, and this would create some more administrative difficulties, but looking to amend current agreements, but then we have 1500 like contract amendments basically. And then we're kind of maybe putting people on a different footing of new members versus prior, although it's an option, I guess, after you've had contract for a year. Um, so that option would be a bit more like having everybody that comes June 1st or after that's currently on month to month sign a contract amendment, basically a user agreement amendment, rather than signing a new annual contract. Would that be a possibility of having a form at the courses where when they check in the golf to could look and see and have them sign it there instead of yeah no i think so and that's kind of like i mean how i suppose the annual memberships get renewed right are they available you can do it at the clubhouse or online no it's all online. oh it's well and i guess that's fair it's like generally it's not no one signs another country they have okay. to go online to, make it to, to start a membership or have okay. all through a system no and that's totally fine if that's how we'd like to implement it but the idea is we would still have to base I guess the basic concept is we have to touch all of these contracts. Um, so usually how we do it when we have a month to month option in city contracts is as I described before, but it seems there's a far greater number of folks on those month to month contracts than our normal situation. So those other options include kind of building in a new month to month option for folks to sign up on or trying to figure out a way to those amend agreements to allow for the price increase so we keep current forms. I mean, I think it's it's there. Yeah. It sounds like we there's a reason we put this five, six weeks out to give us time to work. Yeah, exactly. 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 No, no, yeah. The, I think anything we can do to make it easier for pass holders to yeah. either sign something at the courses like Jesse's saying that I accept the terms of the price increase, yada 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 whatever, and they can do it without having to go into the computer and put your routing number to your bank and everything in and do the whole spiel. Uh, if we can make it easier for them, I, I think we would be ahead of the game. And I think there are going to be people who will not like it. Yeah. I'm reluctant to telling someone, you've been a member for six years, but if you cancel, it's $300, even though you're six years past your first year. 
just because. Well, if you're on a month to month, you're not canceling. If we started a new. Oh, OK, sure. sure, sure. In fact, start a new agreement. That was the word. We need to find a way to keep them on month to month. Say, your rate's going up. Here's an amendment. It changes other than the right. You're still, uh, you're still past your first year. Well, and that's fine. And I think the idea being that once you've been in a year, maybe you have a month to month option. It's sort of like think how the structure happens, right? So we can totally keep that too. Um, yeah, it just see this seems to operate a little differently. So my apologies on. I think this I didn't misunderstood the number of folks who were on. Yeah. That, so I did not emphasize that in this. My apologies. Well, why don't we? But this is all kind of that implementation part. So again, I appreciate the well, flexibility. We'll <laughs> the next week or so, we can, we can figure this out. That's kind of that's more on our end to deal with to worry about. But we'll figure out the smoothest way to do that. That's as least disruptive to the customers and then make it as easy as possible. So yeah. we'll just work through that and we'll I'll send something out to you guys. Otherwise, we're just kind of pushing on a bruise. Yeah, yeah. We have there's no way. Yeah, the next month we'd have to. It would take a month to get there, but the inner people would be able to. One other kind of thing I was thinking about, and I think maybe which affected my presentation some was new contracts also do provide us an opportunity to include language that allows price increases beyond 2%. I don't know if that's a whole can of worms we want to open yet, but that's kind of but that's a whole different. It's like, yes, it, it can if that's an approach we want to take. Um, but at, not Later. just a lot to throw out, I guess, right? <laughs> but it's like that's kind of the idea, too. Maybe we can also start thinking of ways if this goes OK or figure out a good process to maybe allow for um, price increases. But maybe this is one that sets us for a while, too, and the 2% makes more sense uh, as we settle this problem. So that language was probably like really helpful at the time, but it also creates just like some weird. Maybe it, if you think there would be a way where we could set up, we have everyone's email, we can send out emails with a kind of a DocuSign type form for your new thing. And maybe you get a thousand people that respond to that email. Now we're only chasing. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, no, and we can do that as well. Now, and electronic signatures are fine, and that's been a bit of a personal crusade of mine in the city government. Yeah. Allow more of that. <laughs> so it's, okay. yeah. You're talking my language there. Yeah, any any kind of approach we can to just get, yeah, again, touching on all the contracts as efficiently as well. Let's walk ourselves in a room for an hour or so. <laughs> there are still going to be a lot of people that won't look at their emails and don't realize. Oh, yeah. So, I think less uh, with the members because they get they get an email saying your payment's about to come out. Your payment did come out. The general public, we have so many wrong emails. Yeah, we can knock out sixty percent of them and only chase down forty percent of them. Yep. Okay. 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 You, you go back to we do have a June one implementation date. That is part of. Pass motions. Okay. We'll move on to okay. uh, finance and rounds update from Jesse. Thanks for making that note now. So <laughs> we don't like waste the month <laughs> of like explaining things correctly. Of course, <laughs> appreciate that. Okay. All right, so again, going year to date, this goes through yesterday. Uh, let me just kind of go through these and I'll share. So, so rounds report, looking at total number of rounds, we're at 38,000 uh, through this so far this year, 38,106. Last year, same, excuse me, same time period, we were at 30,707, so 20, almost 25% increase. Um, a lot of that, obviously, the weather helps, but the amount of play that we get across the four courses right now on a nice day compared to a nice day last year is still up. Uh, the courses are packed. The driver ranges are packed. There's no lack of uh, participation uh, in any of the courses. McDonald showed the biggest jump uh, percentage-wise um, at 26.5%. So really good number of rounds. Staff is getting killed out there. We're trying desperately to hire staff and get the, staff, the courses full. That's a major problem across the whole world, especially in golf. I mean, every everything I watch industry-wide and, and read is that's one of the biggest biggest issues. So 
Um, staffing is slowly starting. We're, we're finding some people and filling in some of the holes, but we still have a long way to go. Total revenue. Um, if you look at, uh, just look at the total. We're at 1.36 million. Last year at this time, we were at 1.12. Uh, through the end of March, or through the end of March, we were at 960,000. So we've done nearly $400,000 in the last 60 days. Um, it's been absolutely bonkers. As soon as the weather broke good, um, it's went crazy. And that's with three air vacations at that time. So uh, we, we got so much play and so much activity. It's, it's, a, it's a great problem. Yes. I'll cover it later, but is this just golf? This is everything at the golf course. This is um, everything except for um, merchandise sales. It's 5% of the merchandise sales. 95% like goes to the head pros. Okay. Looking at food and beverage alone, breaking that out, it's uh, 110,000 so far this year versus 78,000 last year, almost a, over a 40% increase. Um, and that's before, I'm gonna get to the, the clubhouses in a minute, but that's before we've even really, that was really uh, the things that I'm wanting to do. So, um, the different events, the non-golf events at Auburn play a big part of this, the meetings, the, we've got a wedding Saturday, a graduation, I think, coming up. We've got several six graduations. Six graduations coming up. Uh, and kudos to Kevin. He's working all day. He's doing events on the weekend. He's cooking for all all the different courses, doing whatever. So I uh, appreciate the effort again, trying to fill these these uh, the staff that we desperately need. And then this is what I was kind of uh, talking about earlier. We we're at seventeen hundred and twenty-two uh, at the end of. First of March, basically, we were at 1,603 members, so 100 and was 119 uh, member increase. Uh, seniors have went up 50. Young adult have went up 44. Couples went up a little bit, and adult went up a little bit, but uh, huge, huge numbers of uh, new members rolling in every day. The juniors go down. Somebody found out they could play. They found out they could play. <laughs> yeah, that that. So, okay, this is hard to see. I passed. I gave everybody a copy of this. This kind of looks at expenses a little bit. Um, the um, okay. there's nothing really that jumps out. The labor is obviously the personnel is obviously up or way. We're really good on budget wise, but from last year it's up because I'm here, Kevin's here, Darren is here, the superintendent at Sim. Um, we Darius, yeah. So there's a lot of um, new salaries that factor into that. But it, as far as budget goes, we're still right where we need to be. Um, actually, a little bit under. Um, we're through what a this goes through the end of March, so 24, 25 percent of the year. Um, and if you look at the percentages on the right, everything's pretty well in line. There's some some smaller categories. The building and equipment charges is the one you see it there. We're at 61% of budget there. Um, that's some of the, the issues that we've had with the pumps, with, with different stuff breaking down. So that that's the one line that we're probably, or that we definitely are a little bit over where we want to be, but um, there's nothing we can do about it. But overall, um, there's nothing that really comes out and scares me on this. There's a lot of expense in the spring with not a lot of revenue. I'm trying to get the courses ready with chemical and so forth. Um, so it's a golf. I mean, you guys know it's a the financials. It's not even every month across the year. So um, is there any discussion? Anybody have any questions or comments regarding this? City administrative charges. That is where we at. The bottles. Um, yeah. The, <laughs> That's a number of different things. So we pay the city for different services, police, fire. Um, what else fits into that? Uh, the the fleet, the vehicles that we use. Um, there's different services from the city that that falls into that category. And th those are, they are what they are. Is it prorated on something or what's it based on? Hello. Perfect timing, Troy. <laughs> you can answer a question. <laughs> So we're talking about administrative um, 
charges. What's in there? Like, how do they determine the cost of what we pay? Yeah. Well, yeah, thank you. Glad to drive. <laughs> so, uh, different departments. We have the law department, we have IT, we have uh, accounting and finance. And so, what the uh, finance director does is he creates a matrix of percentages. And there's a certain charge that goes to each one of the departments depending on percentage of usage. And so that's how they come up with those. Sorry, it's based on what? What's the allocation? The amount of usage that, that we use each one of these departments. That's recorded somehow. It is. Yeah, they uh, record how many hours um, are charged to a certain department, how much they use it in. If I was to use Nate all the time, um, and I'd be in the law department constantly and, and needing legal advice and those things, then the charges go up a little. Bit. So. Seem a lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> to answer your question, that money is Nate. <laughs> but it goes across. A minute. <laughs> it goes across all the different departments that support us in different ways. How did the revised budget come about? Um, so the original budget, the, uh, that was put in place, what, a year ago? Um, and then <laughs> it was before I got here. One second. <laughs> so the original budget comes out. Um, we go through a whole budget process through the, the whole summertime. The budget gets adopted uh, in September. I can't remember exact date, but sometime in September. So as the year goes by, um, there is a budget adjustment that happens, and that's what, what the revised is. There'll be a revised budget that will manage uh, changes and different, because you can't anticipate everything. So when something's changed, last year was a good example. Uh, I think the original budget was roughly in the $4 million range. But because we had so much revenue, uh, that actually changed to a $5 million budget. And that kind of gave us the opportunities to spend those dollars, reinvest them back into the golf. To answer your question. Yeah. There, Troy. Can you uh, shed some insight on when, I know it would put in for CIP money for the irrigation systems because they all are on their last leg. Uh, is there a certain time that the city has their budget in to where we would know if that CIP money would be coming through or? Sure, that's a really good question. And all departments and all divisions, and I'll talk a little bit about parks and recreation. So um, we call them budget adjustments and our budget requests. And there's that those items that hit the operating budget. But also we put in for CIP projects as well. So there's there's two angles that we go through to change the budget or make adjustments to the budget. So one is the operating budget, um, and golf isn't part of that because you're enterprise. So that's a, other parts of my department that will put in requests for budget adjustments. Capital projects. There's an ongoing list of projects that we have that we prioritize both within our department. And then we also uh, prioritize it across the whole city. So what I'll do is uh, with my team, we have a whole list of capital projects and we probably have somewhere in the neighborhood of about 25 projects that we would like to see happen. We will submit those um, and it'll go across all departments. We'll have a team that kind of evaluates those and we score them through a matrix. And there's a scoring matrix that will have different priorities as to is this a legal requirement? Um, do we have to have this in place? Um, is there life and safety issues? And then gradually it goes down further and further down. And so that's how these projects are scored. Then they go, uh, the top ones go to the city manager and then they go to council. We will have those all probably, that whole process starts in January. February, and then we have a finished product in the end of March. Um, right now we have finished product that's going to the rest of the departments 
for a total overview. Then it'll go to the city manager and council probably in May. So by and we were just talking about it at council today because we had talked a lot at council. I don't know if you guys pay attention to council today, but we uh, have the pickleball um, uh, facility. So, so one of the council members had talked about let's wait till June and really kind of see how this shakes out with all the other projects. Um, so by June, council has a list of all the projects and they'll prioritize those, push the ones that they feel is appropriate. We'll move those forward. So that's kind of the schedule of how everything goes. Okay, well, I mean, I would just assume that irrigation for a golf course is kind of a necessity. I mean, right. if you don't have water, you need no water, no grass, no grass, no golf. Exactly. So I'm, I guess as, as a group of golfers, we're when that get that got prioritized fairly high. That's, uh, yes, and, and no, I, we have a lot of other things that that are on the list, um, health and safety issues, uh, fire and police. So it, there's, believe me, I, I, I get it. I, I'm standing on both sides of the fence, and that's a barbed wire fence, by the way. <laughs> and so I, I see what the other departments are having to deal with, and I want to be able to support them, make sure that the city has the resources that they need to operate safely, correctly, Efficiently. Um, and, and unfortunately, parks and recreation is on one side of the fence that, you know what, that's a nice thing to have, but there's a necessities that we have to have. We have to have fire trucks, have police cars. So I was just giving an interview this morning. Uh, I'm not going to tell you which media outlet it was, but they asked the question how do we deal with that? And I, and I think it's a balanced approach. And that's something that I always talk about to council members and we talk about um, to other city staff is that quality of issues are important. Quality of, of city issues, having the greater amenities is important. We don't have those things. Uh, we don't have people to keep happy. They leave. There's other places for them to go. So there's a balanced approach that we have to have. Great quality of life and quality of place items but we also have to address uh, just the basic needs of the city as well. So that's why the council, they get elected, they get paid the big bucks and they get elected to do those really big decisions. And as a staff, all the other departments and working with the city manager, and working with the budget office, we present them with all that information so we can help them prioritize. Answer your question. <laughs> I, I got a pretty good gist from what you said. Thank you. Anything else? Yes, not. I got a question. Go ahead. Uh, I noticed on here that we lumped all revenues together, right? Mm -hmm. The total. Yeah, on this, on this, yes. Right. Are we making sure that we're keeping track of? Park revenue separately. Oh yeah, yeah. Every or keeping track of uh, equipment revenues, those revenues separately. So you right. know, the, we can't dip into that and start spending it. All. I can tell you the cart, the cart fund, the cart replacement fund that we just started as of this morning had eighteen thousand seven hundred eighty-eight dollars. So we we definitely are keeping that. Well, there's a different fund set up, and it automatically filters into that fund, the equipment replacement fund, the cart replacement fund. Um, and then at any point, if there's anything you want to see, how much did we make on hot dogs? I can tell you that. So what, whatever you want to see, let me know and I can get it for you. I just want to make sure that we have those funds there when it comes time to roll those cards. Right. Again, and, and that we do have, we're committing that 55 bucks. We are. We, we, we set up a special fund just for that, and we had to have the minutes from the board where you guys approved it in order to set that fund up. And that's that's there just for that part. That's it. Okay. Questions? Anybody else? All right. Thank you. All right. What's next on the agenda? On the agenda is uh, <coughs> item for consideration. Okay. 
So we'll look at that. Okay. Um, it's, it's, yeah. Okay, so a couple things I just put on here, things that we need to start start looking at and kind of preparing for. Cart path repair is going to be a big one. Our cart path, three of the four courses are in dire need of, of repair. Um, so it, there's no way we're going to be able to just go in and do full repairs over all three courses. So what I've kind of done is, first of all, I'll give you some examples. This is at Tex. Um, these are three pitchers, but we could take 50 more um, that look like this at Tex, at Sim, and McDonald. Um, at Auburn, the main area is the cart path. It's going in and off the bridges. Um, where it's, it's bumpy, that's more of a bridge issue than a car pass. So their their paths aren't too bad, but uh, the other three courses have some major issues. So as we start looking at how do we how do we go about trying to get this fixed? Um, this picture on the right is at Tex, the uh, the area between coming off of going to ten, coming off of eighteen, and going into the clubhouse. That entire area you can actually see from this picture how bad it is. Even highlighted and covered up with blue. It's just it, your car, it's better to go through the grass. Um, so, in working with folks with the city that, that deal with this stuff, estimated cost is about $7 per square foot. Um, and that all can vary depending on how big of an area you're doing. If you're doing a lot of smaller areas, it's more expensive. Um, so, what I've kind of done is just for a hypothetical, put together a, a plan here where we fix a thousand feet linear feet of cart path at each course. Um, just pick out your your worst areas. Let's start there. Um, with that, that would be six. The cart paths are about six foot wide, so that would be six thousand total square feet per course. That's forty two thousand per course, one hundred twenty six thousand total for the three courses. Um, and then, of course, we know how projects go. So I just pump that up to an estimated about one hundred seventy five thousand dollars. That would fix roughly a thousand feet of cart path at each course. Um, just this little area right here was forty eight thousand dollars. Um, because the cart path is so wide. Uh, so that that little section is a little bit different than a standard cart path because of the, the layout. Um, but it's something we're going to have to address. So I just wanted to bring it up and let you guys think about kind of how we want to approach this, um, especially with the new carts. We, we don't want carts getting beat to death right off the bat. So, um, and it is a major complaint that I, that I do here. So any... And just kind of bring, put, putting this out there for you guys to think about. Any questions or thoughts on this heart path repair? I know exactly what you're talking about. Sometimes, uh, would it be helpful? Again, I think I've mentioned this before, but maybe us meeting at some of the golf courses and looking at this would maybe help prioritize some. Of, I mean, because some of it is worse than others. Right. I know at Tex going down number one. When you leave that tee box, that first fifty feet or hundred feet—I don't know what it is exactly—but so the the it's first brutal. the first thing I did was look at this section and down number one, and it was sixty-two thousand dollars to do it all. Um, yeah, I just I just thought you know sometimes getting a visual aid helps if you're going to try to prioritize something or say well this really needs attention now or. Uh, I, I totally agree. And Nate, we've talked about this a little bit, but if let's say next meeting we wanted to meet at a golf course. Uh, kind of help help me. How do we do that? Yeah. Um, so we need to provide public notice of where the meeting's going to be. That's not really an issue. We set up the bylaws. We say we're regularly here, but it's fine to meet elsewhere. I mean, the issues would be kind of making sure we've got enough time to do the business that we need to do each month. And if that's going to be an issue, we can set it up as kind of a special meeting. Yeah. We wouldn't necessarily have to just because you're all in the same place, but the fact we would be discussing things that would be within your purview and actions that could be taken makes it more like a meeting. So it would be just best to provide things like public notice and stuff like that. It is a little weird because like, do we want, let's say someone shows up to the meeting and wants to walk through with us, maybe provide provision for that. But it's just kind of an odd, just because of the nature of the board dealing with a physical space and you all can go there and play and do all that sort of stuff. It just creates kind of that sort of thing we need to think about. Providing notice and then making sure public does show up kind of how we want to accommodate that situation. If we promise not to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just, 
I think that's probably technically fine. Also, we're not doing anything that would like be struck down or something, but then it's just members of the body become potentially subject to ethics complaints and potential civil penalties. So that's what we're trying to <laughs> just trying to avoid. And someone just filing a complaint with the AG and causing just unnecessarily trouble when we can just get out ahead of it with some weird rules. <laughs> We've done this with Park Board and some other yeah. as long as we post it and there is anybody there, we just give them an opportunity to listen on everything and give them an opportunity to kind of give their opinion as well. Works out pretty well. I, I 100% agree. I think the first couple of meetings need to be here to get going, but I just like my job, I feel like if I'm at City Hall every day, I'm not seeing what's going on. And I feel that would be apply to you guys too. If you don't know what's going on at the course, it's hard to make decisions. So I would love to get you guys out where we can talk about, look at the stuff and talk about it on site. And maybe a way to start doing that is if people have ideas of when or how, send individual emails to Jesse. And as we did before, he can contact the group instead of replying all and risking a meeting sort of stuff. We can get it set up. Our limitations again are just making sure we have enough notice to the public of us changing the meeting space, which really just need to be a week or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, making sure we have those other okay. things set up. So, would it maybe be yeah. a <laughs> if we did make it a special meeting or a subcommittee or? Uh, oh, yeah, and special meeting is an alternative option as well. And that can be like we can decide that here or again, like we did with the prior special meeting. If you'd like to make a request for the board to consider that, we can contact everybody in the same kind of way to make that just whether and how to have the meeting decision. Another thought and idea um, might be to schedule it regular rotating basis. So maybe uh, odd months. Uh, it's at one of the golf courses in the even months it's here. Then you rotate it with one each one of the golf courses on the odd months. Be, so that way it's somewhat predictable and get that information out way ahead of time. So the even months it's at the golf course. So I think initially, yeah, I, I think that would be a great way to do it. Initially if we started that now, it would be eight months before one of the courses visited. If there was a way we could get to yeah. four courses quick, I, I don't know, and then and then get on that regular rotation. I always, I always watch the park board meetings. I I've just watched them for years and years, and so I'm used to watching them. And, and so I say these guys will sometimes they'll do like a workshop where they'll say, you know, on a certain day we're going to do this workshop where they'll all get together and <clears throat> go through certain things, and it's kind of out of the realm of their monthly meeting, but still can be advantageous to uh, to get something like that done. You know, like in this case, we're trying to maybe prioritize certain things. This is where the money needs to go right now. This this needs to be done. Uh, I don't know if we call it a workshop or like I said, subcommittee or. Well, and workshop's fine too, but it'll still just kind of fall within the rubric of making sure it, we provide notice public notice, stuff like that, and still consider it a meeting for like a legal sort of like for that reason. Right. But we can kind of structure it however mm -hmm. you'd like within that concept. Yeah, I mean, the way I view it and just, just in my own head is more about actually looking and seeing the golf courses in the areas and not so much about uh, a meeting and making any decisions or determinations or motions, anything like that. There's one criteria. It's got to be at least 75 degrees. <laughs> what not a hundred five, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can we can kind of figure that out, and maybe we can just make a proposal to the group for the next meeting to be at. Where, where would we like to go first? I know it's like we're just talking about a few different spots. I think Tex is one of. I mean, you tell us, Jesse, but Tex, I would say Tex or Mac. Um, I would say Tex or Mac as well. Yeah. The most opportunity. I would say text with cart pass stuff because they have the most traffic by yeah. far. Yeah. All right, let's do text. Long text, is, we text is bad. Maybe try to, you know, and we could try to do it either 
are people thinking more regular meeting or try to set it as a special kind of event to focus on? I think it'd be a special meeting, like special event. You're saying a special meeting. I like the special thing because, like Jesse says, if we go alternate every month, it could be you know, who knows when before it gets done. If, if we can set a special meeting and say, okay, in two weeks, we want to meet at this course. But we could also, and I, I think I was unclear on this, set our next regular meeting there as well. We just need to provide notice of that too. So do we want to do like our next regular meeting at Tex or because we could try to just do the rest of the business up front really quickly? By you know, Auburn, it's kind of hard to do a regular meeting anywhere. In that, okay. <laughs> recording, yeah. Recording would be very difficult. A meeting. I mean, there's no quiet spots at the other three clubhouses. So maybe yeah, we can just call it sort of a special meeting, but we'll set up a date that everybody's available. We won't really even put an action item on the agenda just to provide public notice, and then we have time to do all of that sort of thing, but also open to the public. Uh, does that sound maybe the idea? Uh, the next item I've kind of put on this to, to look at, we've got restrooms on the courses except for Tex, because at Tex, you pass the clubhouse at the midway point on the front and the back nine, so there's not much need. Um, I get a lot of um, point feedback requests on this. So I've taken some pictures. Um, this is McDonald Golf Course. The uh, Honestly, I think this one, we, we could put just some – and TLC and ourselves. I mean, it looks terrible in this picture, but I think paint and just kind of putting some work into it ourselves, we could we could make this much better than it is. Uh, let me just go through the three. Auburn Hills, definitely. I took these pictures this morning. Uh, it, I mean, they're not fancy, that's for sure. It's con a cinder block wall and a concrete floor with a with a toilet, but uh, gets the job done. I think again, just some some attention on our half on our behalf. But the one at Sim is a uh, glorified porta potty. Um, <laughs> I hear all the time, I'm not going in that thing. Like, I'm not even going to touch the door. Tex has one of those too. Tex does. Tex has one just like that. It's back there. Okay. Um, I did meet with a company the other day that they basically build prefab buildings that they just come and set in place. Um, fairly inexpensively just to kind of, I was actually talking to him about something else, but just to kind of get an idea of what something like that would cost, it's they're really trying to get into the golf space. So um, he's working on some numbers that I can bring back and they may be astronomical, like not even something to consider, but I at least want to look at all the options. Um, I don't know, what are you, I'd like, love to get feedback from you guys on. There is no water or electricity to that there. now, correct? Right? No, on the ground. Mm -hmm. There's no septic system, so if you put a building there, you have to come up with it. There's big expense with that one, yeah. So maybe it's looking at, I don't know, a better version of this. Uh, I mean, obviously the expense to get everything ran to that building would be huge, uh, but I, I get bombarded with complaints about this, this situation at Sim. Yeah. The good thing about SIM too is it comes around at the nine to where you have the uh, main facility. You know, like you said about text, you know, you come back at around the nine so to the facility. Yeah. A bonus, but yeah, this is. Um, I don't know. Again, just kind of bringing this to everyone's attention, things that I hear the most about. Uh, I want to make sure everyone's aware that. Uh, you know, these are things that we just as definitely you talk that you talk to, and I know it started as a casual conversation. They do some kind of a modular, is that what you said? Yeah, so think of like Dutch Brothers, the new coffee place that they basically come set that building in place, hook up the pops, and they're takes three days and they're open for business. Um, now they that's obviously a lot bigger scale than what we're looking at, but they do what they I was talking to them about was a like a teaching studio with the two golf bays. Um, where you're actually hitting into the driving range, they build that and just drop it on your range, put it in place. Um, and then he brought up this idea um, for on-course bathrooms that they they could do that as well. I said, well, you know, 
company that did this. I mean, I didn't, I didn't look at the label as I walked in. But <laughs> 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 they didn't put a sign up because they were proud of it. <laughs> I, I happened to go to a golf course in Palm Desert. It was actually in uh, Hinton Bridge, but anyway, um, that had a modular type one because their clubhouse was yeah, miles away. And it, so uh, for them, I mean, it appeared to be a temporary, but it was a modular. It was the cleanest, nicest, slickest restroom I'd ever been. So I don't know if that's the kind of thing he's talking about. I think so. He's going to send me some mock-ups and some prices. Again, I, I may get those laugh and move on. I have no idea what to expect. But, um, yeah, I think it sounds like probably what I told him is simple, basic. We're not doing anything elaborate. Um, let me just see what, what it would cost to do the most basic thing. We'll go from there. But, um, but again, I get complaints of this i i don't i don't know how much this is used but inspector we were talking about you give those women new restrooms the women at sim they, I, yeah that trust factor would go way up if they had a clean restroom too so. right okay well let me, let me see what that comes back and i'll i'll kind of explore other things that we could do that won't require septic and hookup i don't know i don't know what that is but let me let me dig into that but again just kind of putting this on the radar The uh, the next thing, the water coolers that are on the course, um, a lot of these are, they're old, they're falling apart, the wood's rotting. Um, again, these are all like, we're not gonna see any type of return on this, but it's a service that, that I hear a lot about. Um, we, looking at the golf magazines and the different companies that provide these things, they're about $1,500. Um, and if you had one on number, four tee box and one on seven tee box uh, at each course. It'd be 16 total, two on the front, two on the back. Um, it'd cost $24,000 just to put something out to put the cooler in. Um, we're obviously going to go and try to fix up as many of these as we can ourselves, put paint and new boards, if that's a possibility, but some of them are beyond repair. So um, I don't know what, what you guys think about that. It's not a priority issue, but it is something that people see. It adds to the the golf course for sure. I think if you're going to redo them, you might also look at that uh, new composite mm. stuff because it'll last forever. Right. It's kind of like those benches at Sims with that composite. They've been there for years and they look nice. I mean, we were there that day. Does anyone have any knowledge what if you rebuilt pre pre this with what you're talking about, just to, what to expect cost wise? I just uh, built steps of my deck and I put the composite on and I think a 12 foot piece. Um, I think it was somewhere, but I, I did a different one, but it was somewhere around 80, $90 for a 12 foot piece, but I'm sure you can get it less expensive at home or home Depot or wherever, but it's not cheap. Yeah. So I, want to. yeah I just thought something that would last longer that maybe you wouldn't have to refurbish in four, five, ten years, whatever it might be. Right. But that can yeah. cause us to make this follow. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's more upfront, but it's you're done. Well, it looks there. good. It, it does look good. Yeah. It'll, so, it looks nice. Okay. I would say the only downfall of that composite, if it's in the sun all the time, that stuff gets really, really hot. If it's not covered, it gets hot, hot. Mm. Um, I say just initially what it would take just to paint them. They're, they're not falling apart. Some, some, some of them are. Yeah, but the ones that aren't, we we could paint and seal them and and you know, so I, I guess let us go take a full inventory on these and kind of see exactly. I, I just have not had time. I was trying to do that before this meeting. There's just not been time to do that. So let me go take an actual inventory of each one that we have and see which ones we could paint, which ones need to be replaced completely. Um, and I'll come back to the next meeting. We can decide on what we want. But I do get a lot of comments about this. I kind of wonder too about if this is something that uh, a lot of times uh, I can get men's club guys to come out and help do things, whether it's trim trees or this or that, but sanding something down and putting a coat of stain on and then putting a sealer on uh, doesn't seem extremely difficult to me. One, two, three, four, five, just seven. I got six recruiters right here. I just feeding. I'm just saying, you know, if we can get some free labor, uh, it might help some of this stuff. Uh, just people that would volunteer to come out 
So if you guys are associated with or in playing the leagues and the different groups that you play with, I mean, if you can toss the idea, if we can, that would be great. That's what I've always done. Every course I've ever been at. Um, if you people want to help, feel like they're welcome to help. So yeah, if, if maybe maybe in the meantime, while we go kind of take an inventory and get specific on what we need, you guys can kind of see if any of your groups would be interested in helping with any of these things. That'd be great. Too late in the school year, but like the shed that East High built for McDonald's. Well, High school projects for the shop classes. Materials they build. The the little items like this, I hear so much about just because they say, well, no, nobody's touched this stuff in forever. It's the same stuff. And it, even though it's not, I mean, it's not going to really affect your golf game, it does make a big impact on your impression of the golf course. Which the things you have, you're doing during those videos you're putting on the YouTube. Right. Yeah. Ooh. The whole process on it. <coughs> that would be They'll cool. be able to recruit all sorts of pride. <laughs> Get me out there. <laughs> okay so okay well yeah if you guys can talk if you have people that you play with that have that kind of skill that would be fantastic and i'll go take an inventory kevin and i and, um kind of see which ones are just beyond repair and then uh which ones we think we can fix up yeah Okay, any any other uh, kind of on course items that you've noticed that that we should address, maybe add or repair replace? So about uh, pulling cores in the fairways and tee boxes right. at some of the courses because I just I know I had seen it done in years past, <laughs> but I don't believe I've seen it done for several years. And I don't know if it was kind of a manpower issue. I knew through COVID that a lot of things maybe weren't get done that were normally done. Yeah. But uh, I think those things help the courses a lot. Yep. We we have plans and kind of waiting on everything to pop out of dormancy. But we, yeah, we do have plans. We just bought that deep thatcher, like I told you. Um, we're going to pull plugs at McDonald's and Tim um, for sure. Um, Auburn, I. Making me sound better. I don't remember what Ron said he was going to do. To be honest with you, I know we've we've talked about it, but I'm been a few weeks. Um, Shattered. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we definitely have have plan. We're just like as like I said, as soon as the weather. I talked to Ron Reese at Mac yesterday, and he was saying probably two weeks as soon as everything's. We don't have a freeze coming up on the weekend like we do this weekend, and everything's out of dormancy. We're gonna. Knife those things, pull plugs, throw fertilizer and water on them, and watch them explode. Hopefully, oh, and then Sam will be right behind. They're going to use the same equipment, so Sam would be right behind him doing that. Point into the courses themselves. Sure. That's where people spend their time. Did we talk about cart signs up near the greens as opposed to the chalk lines that we've got down? The yeah, so the the guys don't want the signs. Some of the guys don't want the signs because it does. They have to get off the motor every time. They're trying to hurry up and get ahead of golfers or because of course sure. you pack so fast but the lines we we put those out you can't see them they're they're not yeah. yeah if the sun's not facing the right way you can't see them so we're i'll show you some pictures of what ron did at mac he just put some up over the last couple of weeks um that he can move pretty easily so everyone's every week he could put them in different spots so that exit point is different um so yeah i'll, I'll show you that in a minute but yeah we tried the lines but they you can't see them it's not uh, okay, We'd always have to realize there was a line there. Yeah. Jesse and I around, we had to look for it to find it. Yeah. And the uh, the starters and markets are in place, and I've got really good feedback on those. I mean, we're, we're still trying to fill all the, the starters and the marshals. Uh, I've gotten great feedback on that, and we're slowly filling all the all the spots at each course. But um, just having them out to just politely, most people just don't know. So they're just politely saying, you know, when you see that line or you see that stake or whatever, um, and it's it's starting to, Eliminate a lot of traffic around the green. So, open. Yeah. Okay. Well, what's next? Next item. Yeah, going to our golf appreciation day. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask for your help a little bit on this. Um, 
So golf appreciation day or golfer appreciation day. I've talked about it a lot with you guys. It's April 29th, not this Saturday, but next Saturday at Auburn Hills, one to five. We're having it at Auburn this year just because the timing, the, we knew the grass would be a little greener, uh, be a little better shape, being Zoysia. So um, that's why we're having it there. Here are some of the pictures, and I've added more since this, but we got live music. Uh, um, the band is called Branded. We're, we went out today and figured out where we're going to put the big stage by the driving range. Um, Strix on Cleveland is going to be doing club fittings, demos, ball fittings, wedge fittings, everything. Um, Cobra will be there. Perfect Hands Golf, it's a new training aid that um, is, is really starting to take off. He's going to come out, set up a booth. Um, Outlaw Beer is going to be doing beer tastings. It's a new beer that we're putting in clubhouses. It's starting to hit pretty good. Um, they're going to be out doing all kind of fun stuff. Beret Grills, it's a big grill company that actually partnered with, or I think has part ownership in the Four Sixes Ranch from Yellowstone, if, you're, if you ever watch Yellowstone. But they're going to bring, they're going to do rotisserie whole, whole hogs. And they're going to have a whole big show out there with that. Um, we've got, what else is going on? We're, we're going to have a booth we're doing contests. Well, let me just go to the next thing here. So here's a little timeline. Um, one o'clock, we'll kick it off. The band's going to, this will, this, Probably we'll tweak this and change it a little bit, but the band's going to start around 1:15. Uh, we're going to have a long drive contest. I'm going to create a grid down the middle of the driving range. We're going to have theme music for everybody that's playing, um, and we're going to do a long drive contest. Um, we'll have prizes for all this stuff. At 2:30, Scott's going to give a short game clinic on the putting green. He'll be mic'd up with speakers there. Um, closest to the pin contest at 3:30, uh, Steve's going to do a short iron clinic at 4. We are going to have a free drawing for a TV and a raffle for a Scotty Cameron putter. Um, Colin's going to do a driver clinic, and then we'll kind of wrap it up, and then we'll have all the booths. The, the driving range is four. Up, we measured it's pretty much exactly 400 feet long, and we've got booths from one end to the other on the top part, and then booths on the bottom part all the way across. That'll have hitting base. So you're actually hitting. That'll be all the equipment down the bottom part. Um, we have the Humane Society is going to be out with. Some, Dogs that they're up for adoption, kind of add that to it. Um, the band, just all kinds of stuff. And it, like I said, well, I've got four or five more vendors that have added since this. So uh, we're expecting a really big crowd. We've got over, overflow parking at, uh, this is probably not quite like this, but this is kind of the idea I'm going for on the driving range um, with all the tents and the different vendors set up. Um, we've got overflow parking at, um, Dillon's just down the street and the, with the car, the sidewalk access, they can walk, go under the tunnel and join um, or at the, where the new Ziggy's pizza is that little business building at the bottom, down by maintenance. Um, so we expect a huge turnout and I would uh, just ask you guys, I'll send you some stuff, some different things that we've put together, some promotional stuff. If you guys don't mind to maybe share that on, on your Facebook or whatever you can do. Um, help get the word out. I want this thing to get so big that the cops had to come shut us down. That's right. So I want, I want a ton of people here. Just a fun way to kind of kick off the season. Share, say thank you to everybody. It's completely free. There's no cost. Um, we'll have Fev cart set up out there, so we'll be having food and drinks going. Um, just a just a fun day. So anything you guys can do to to try to help drive people here. Um, we're gonna have stuff set up by the road. So when everyone driving by will, will know something big's happening over there. So uh, just a just a fun day. So I wanted to, I'll send that out in an email. Just some of the pr promo stuff. If you guys can help, that would be that would be great. Unfortunately, I'm gonna be out of town, so I expect everybody else to be there. <laughs> well, give Evan a chance at the long drive then. If you're not gonna be there, then that's <laughs> right. Hot. Have a shot. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Randy. Bring the three with you. That's all you, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, and if there's still got a week and a half, is there something you guys think of that we could add to this? Let me know. I'm all for it. All. No, no limit. What we could do here. Want to go ahead and go into your project update then? Yep. Yep. Let me pull it up here. I'm putting you out of a job. I'm figuring this. Out. That going to feature some of the new expanded menu stuff that you guys had been talking about? Not yet. Here's the cooking out there on the driving room. So burgers, dogs, whole hog. Are here. That's not the fun. Get that grill working. Uh, this hooray company is coming out. Oh, 
they're going to have all kinds of grills and stuff going on. Yeah, basically they're going to show off their grills and they're going to do all the cooking for us in return. They've offered to be at every tournament golf event we have. Yeah, you go on the uh, stuff. It, it's pretty neat stuff. It's it's uh it's going got a big ranch. Going to look cool when you walk up to it. I promise you. All right, so some projects. We got some new signs. Uh, we've got more coming, but McDonald on the uh, fence on both both entrances. We've got the new sign up there. Tex has their sign. Um, it's a two sided sign, eight feet tall, four foot wide. Um, and then Sim, what's the the main entrance by the clubhouse will be up in the next couple of weeks. The one on the other end is is already up. Um, looks really good. So um, just to kind of update the the look to the, of the courses when they come in. And this is the project that was done throughout the whole um, park division. So park, parks department. So um, we, we definitely wanted to make sure we were, you know, all under that same brand. So it looks really good. Uh, definitely more noticeable than the old signs that were up. Actually some positive comments on Facebook about the sign. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a ton of feedback on that post. Uh, so here is the new Vertidrain that, Seth and got and we we have the area by the green see those now when you go and it kind of moves like Mike was saying earlier um but it's a little bit bigger up a little bit better um so take a couple extra days you'll still up in the long run it should be a, a better process for it. uh we've McDonald is done they've already killed up good to go uh we did text last week. We we're doing Auburn today and tomorrow, and Sim will be next week. So, of course, when the greens are budding really good, they're rolling with the way you want them, then we have to go in and destroy them. But a um, couple weeks, all the courses will be done and, and healed. So if we could get some rain, it would be the best thing ever, but it don't look like it's going to happen. But Make a call. Yeah, you can do that. So huge. The well in the pump at Sim is back working again. That was last Thursday, I think, Thursday or Friday, he turned the water on. Um, I, I told you earlier, he called me the first day and said, hey, you're about to get a lot of complaints. Why is that? And he said, because the course is too wet. Like That's the greatest phone call I've ever gotten. So he really, it's been extremely frustrating for him. I know the course is dry. It's not where it should be. Um, he had actually sprayed a ton of st stuff to get rid of some of the grasses he didn't want, and then we lost water. So he's got bare spots. It's going to, we're looking at how we can, sod or whatever we need to do to to fix some of those places but overall the course this is the exact same spot um i know timing of weather had something to do with this but if you look on the left that was the day before irrigation you look on the right that was two days after irrigation um you know we had a couple warm days so it greened up but you can just tell the the difference um and i think in a matter of weeks you're going to see a significant improvement to the fairways that's him in the clubhouse, uh, I want to thank Darius and Kevin. We spent yesterday, um, most of the day, cutting the slat wall, getting it hung up through that freaking stone wall or whatever. Cinder block. Yeah. Cinder block Double wall. Building a cinder. Um, we've hung two new TVs, so obviously all this stuff. All this move, and, and Ken's going to start putting stuff in, uh, putting merchandise in. He probably started today. Um, to kind of bring that back around. The only thing that we still have to do is in the dining area, the TV on the far end, we're going to mount it from the ceiling so it comes down and get that wood. Well, this piece right here, that's, that TV will be mounted from the ceiling. We'll get that wood out of there. And then the counter should be in the next couple of weeks. So, um, again, that that was about $100,000 less than what we were quoted to, to bid that out and do it. So, um, Kevin almost cut his thumb off yesterday, but. <laughs> but it was worth it. And things back up on the walls. The, the stuff that was up on the walls, like on the walls with the bathroom doors and the stuff in the ladies' locker room. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. poster boards and all that stuff they had up. Yeah, yeah it'll go back up. Yeah, Kent just needs to start getting that stuff put back up. Yeah. I asked about it yesterday, or last Tuesday, rather, and they said somebody had told them they couldn't put everything back up. I think, the, I think the painter told him that when he was painting. I'll clarify that. Okay. okay. No problem. Okay. Okay. This was yesterday at Auburn. This was, uh, we had seven at a high school tournament. We had seven uh, teams out, and this is awesome. 
I mean, that driving range is it's 400 foot long and four feet between each each player. Um, it was it was great. So superintendent's nightmare, huh? Yeah. <laughs> he was making a face. That's too many people. But here's what's crazy: is on days, Randy, you can you've probably seen it on days where it's nice and it's not a high school tournament, especially on the weekends. I mean, the range looks like this a lot right now, um, which is which is our goal. Now the the issue with that, obviously, it gets beat up really bad. So one issue we had was the sand, you know, filling, filling your divots after you're done helps tremendously. But the sand, if we're on that front tee box, sand is 60 yards behind you. People aren't going to go get some sand, come back, go back and put the scoop back and go. So we're getting rid of those buckets, and we bought three of these, uh, these wagons to put the sand in where we can move it right close to the rope. Uh, and then at the end of the day, it's super easy to pull them into the clubhouse and, and then bring them back out in the morning. Um, got went and got these over the weekend and put them out, and I think that's really going to help with encouraging people to fill their divots and, and take care of the, the tee box. But as much traffic as we have, especially there and at Sim, uh, Troy said a couple weeks ago he drove by Sim and there was a million people. Um, the ranges are kind of my I love hitting range ball, so I love um, I love seeing the ranges full. So, but we it does. It's my office is at Tex. There are people waiting for a spot on the driving range. They're standing behind. Yeah, Steve said for the first time ever, he's getting phone calls of people are asking, they're calling and saying, can I get on the range right now? That's it. <laughs> it's crazy. It's great, but it's crazy. Yes, sir. Question. Uh -huh. uh, on the ranges, can we uh, maybe call through those range balls and get some that will actually fly? Well, you got to help them. <laughs> we we do have uh, we we actually just got in we've got all new range balls that all new range ball that text and at auburn auburn is actually going to switch to a yellow range ball um they're they're in we're going to put those out probably next weekend um uh, tex has got brand new range balls that just came in range balls are just like equipment that's you can't even order them they won't even let you place an order if you do, it's a year before you get them. So we we stocked up knowing that was the case last year. They just came in. We also just worked to do it with the first tee. They get Kirkland practice balls, uh, the ones that the misprint, the label was sideways or something. They get um, they store those, and at the end of the year, they donate them to first tee. Uh, we're going to get several thousand of those balls for free donated to us. We just pay the shipping on them. So for whatever that comes out to, five hundred bucks, we're going to get. $10,000 worth of golf balls. Um, and we're going to do that a, at least once a year, maybe a couple times a year. Um, we just got that worked out. So that's a that's a huge, huge thing for us. So to answer your question, all three ranges within the next two weeks will have brand new, brand new golf balls. Where's Arbor? Where's what? Changing the name. Oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, I put all these together about 12 minutes before this meeting. All right. How long have you been staring at that? Wait. <laughs> All right. So we another thing. This is at Mac. Um, the practice like a pro sign. It kind of shows the, the way that to protect the turf best. The way that your divot pattern should be when he range ball scattering out the divots or making one huge hole takes a lot longer to recover than than the linear uh, top. So we're putting those up, trying to just kind of help people un understand and and just educate them on the best way to take care of the golf course. Um, to your question earlier about the signs, Ron has put the cart signs up. And he's also put these posts just to make it more visible. Um, to know where to go, where to exit the fairway and get back on the cart path. And again, these are very easily easy to move. So each week he'll move into a different place. So it's all year, it's not every cart leaving in the same spot. So um, we tried the lines, they don't work. So we're probably going to go at least with the cart signs, if not the post at every um, one of those signs at Auburn, but it's way over by the sand thing that nobody sees. He moved it. We put it out by the. It, he put it on a post that he can move, so we can move it closer to the box every day. We're also, still thinking about putting mats at Auburn as well as Tex. Yeah, Tex is hard. The T box is not very big, and it is not as big. And no matter where you, if you put a permanent mat there, you're eating up part of it. So, say you take that in four quadrants, that T box, whether you put it on the back or the front. You're eating up some of that tea box, so it's a 
it's a harder fix there. At Auburn, we were looking at that, um, that those power T. I still would like to do that, um, but it is a pretty considerable expense. I was hoping to be able to get a, um, a grant for that, and I've, I'm falling flat on my face. I'm trying to figure out how to do that. I've tried a lot of different ways to try to come up with that, and I've not had any luck. So I, to be honest, that's probably a next spring at this point. There's so so many other things that I want to focus on. If I could have gotten that with the grant, I was ready to go, but I um, and while we're on um, the topic here, you'll notice no staff here. We've got beginner clinics, ladies clinics, uh, take it to the course clinic. Ron Reese is having some kind of dental surgery, so he make, gave me a report to read. Uh, these guys are just packed right now. It's impossible for them to get away, so um, that's why they're not here. But I did reach out for all this info and made sure if there's anything anybody wanted me to bring up, I would. Um, Ron, kind of a couple of highlights of what he sent me. The greens were aerified again. They're completely healed in about 10 days. They're in good shape again. Uh, the new greens mower was delivered in March um, and it's in use. That also allowed him to upgrade the T mower, rotated the old greens mower to, into the T mower. So uh, equipment is finally starting to roll in. Um, he put down some pre-emerge. He's trying to spray for broadleaf, but the wind has been so strong. It's, it's so hard to spray. Um, we again he mentioned that we've been uh, marking and identifying areas that, that we want to sod um, and he's going to start doing that this next week um the pond the new the work we did on the pond wall last year for the irrigation um he's been already this year has been able to utilize 1.6 million gallons of water um and that's about twelve thousand four hundred dollars worth of city water that he didn't have to use this year so far even in the drought now He's basically ran those dry until we get rain, so we're about to have to go back to city water um, until we get some rain. But still, that's a that's a huge gain already. That's about 10% of the total cost of the project already recouped in the two months here. So um, success on that. If we could just get some rain, it, it would be so much better um, than what we did last year, as much mo money as we spent on water. Um, uh, he mentioned the, the blocks and the cart signs. Um, we did open the grass tee at Mac. That They've been on mats all winter on the driving range. They opened the grass tee last week. So um, that basically doubles the uh, hitting space. So there's potential more revenue there. Um, and he did mention, uh, Robert, Mr. Alexander, that you guys and part of the McAdams had, had come to them about doing some uh, kind of a cleanup crew. So I, I want to say thank you. Yeah, I want to say thank you for being willing to help and proactive and anyone with your group I don't have the chance to talk to that's that is talking and just had that idea please thank them for me um he so he's looking at um just kind of some that area a lot of trash gets on the golf course so different put it together a day like a cleanup day and he's working with some other groups too so um, we're getting more volunteer type activity which is really good and very much appreciate thank you so, um okay Last thing at Mac, we had the mayor's briefing um, to kind of do a ribbon cutting for the, the new ball dispenser. It's in place, working great, people love it. Um, it makes it so much easier than having to go to the clubhouse, get the balls, put them in your vehicle, drive back to the range. So, um, and this is the the team of of uh, construction students that built the, the shed that it's in. They did a fantastic job, so. What's that thing around your neck? Oh, I don't know, but I could not breathe. <laughs> You see that big pair of scissors? That wasn't for the ribbon. I was cutting that, that top. <laughs> okay, we have finally, four months later, behind what we thought we would be done by now, we have a pre-bid meeting for this Thursday at 2 o'clock for text for the contractors to come in and look at the work that we um, are, are wanting to get done there and, and get out. So, um, again, that money has been set aside. So it's over. Maybe before that, uh, we're finally going to going to start work on that. We got the permitting back yesterday or Friday from Mac. Two things that the city wanted changed to review, so the Mac one should be out right behind this. Yeah, and it was like clubhouse. Clubhouse, yeah. Clubhouse. And at Tex, it's mainly exterior, uh, and then at Mac, it's the whole thing. So finally got some some movement there. Um, I kind of told you guys about the Kate about the carts, um, and again. 
it sounds like we have clarification that you guys have the authority to approve the RFP instead of going to having to go through. So um, that's exciting. And then again, the uh, new equipment starting to arrive. We, uh, I don't know that it's a bad way, but it's uh, new equipment starting to arrive. We got some of the greens mower, gotten two of the other, two of the six, the other four are, should be in any time. Um, the sprayer is ready and Parkman, like we've gotten it yet, but it should be. So um, the equipment that we ordered seven months ago is finally starting to, to show up. So that's going to help tremendously with um, what we're trying to accomplish. Okay. Any questions? Comments? Any other projects that you want us to look into? Dangerous question. Kevin. Okay. I really don't have any updates until Jesse and I get these two, the architects and everything. Once they're done, we get text redone and then McDonald redone. Then I can start messing with kitchens and do a little more. We did get or he's really close to the point of being able to post the job for the an actual cook at Auburn Hills so I can roll out a menu and stop being there every time there's an event. Um, that's coming soon. That'll be the first place that has an actual cook. Until the other remodels are done, the kitchens won't be revamped till after he has. But can you speak a little bit on some of the events that you've after? Uh, every other month we do a the Edward Jones conference for all the offices in the area. So they do a meeting and lunch it's been between 30 and 50 people, depending on if it's a leadership or another. Um, every Thursday at Auburn Hills, there's just a meeting of a BNI group. I don't know what they do. Um, but 20, 30 people every Thursday that we booked. And then a constant barrage right now of I probably have 10 different wedding groups that I'm working with between one first one's this Saturday up to Mike's niece came in yesterday and met with me about a, a reception next May. So 10 to 12 weddings, um, business meetings constantly, ton of graduation parties, um, lots of masking for the same dates because there's tons of different families graduating. So just a whole lot of them we have at Sim. Uh, the WWAGA, is that what they're called? Okay. Uh, WWAGA. Uh, their, their deal's coming up, and we're doing a luncheon there in June, I believe that one is. Is and that I, the match? No, that's not match play. That's, uh, yeah. It's the two, it's spring invitation. The two day, yeah. So the second day, we're doing a, they chose a pasta bar out there at Sim that we're going to do. Um, Tex has one coming up too with that same group, I believe. Oh. Auburn's is first. That one's a sandwich deal for their, that's their pro am. And then Tex has one. Why? Tex is part of the, maybe part of the four. I don't, I don't know. Tex has one also, but thank Waga for doing all these and they're doing food with all of them. But there's pretty much one thing going on every week that I've been at. I've had a Saturday event every day this morning, every Saturday this month. A really good atmosphere for these groups that come in. So they have a great place, but in return, obviously, we make money off this. It goes right back. So we're doing all these different things. Every dollar that we're getting is just more money that we have in the golf fund to put back into the phone. So uh, every time with him, he's like, oh, we've got to go. I've got a tour. 330, you know, whatever. You want to meet another group. So um, I think that non golf line of business is a huge increase for us. You look at the F and B numbers for Auburn Hills, they're way above even Tex, who has a lot more golfers because of those events and everything we're doing. And they don't all have food. Sometimes we're just renting a room, but that gets just sitting there. So if we rent it out, it's, it's more money for golf fund. So. You're going to try to replicate that at Tex? Uh, it's harder because Auburn has a back room where I have a separation wall that I can do private banquets. But um, what's that junk room on the back side of it? It's exactly what you just mentioned. Clean <laughs> the junk. 
It is a problem with it is access. Right now, the only access is through the men's restroom. Way you can do that, that's where the uh, air conditioning is. Yeah. So from the pro shop, you can't go directly through because all the furnaces and everything are in line with that. We took that to the architect and said we want to use this room. And two weeks later, they came back and said we really can't figure out a way to access that other than coming outside. There, there's a back door, but that would be, I mean, it's right by the parking lot. So it's a weird entrance that, but it is a big room and we are planning on. We've even talked about because it has lockers there on risers. If we just took the lockers out, we could actually put hitting bays back there for the winter oh, and yeah. have five hitting bays to hit in the nets. Our recommendation is to put a simulator um, a bay at Tex, and that would be kind of That's half the women's locker room. Yeah, it would go in. We put a door from the uh, pro shop where the merchandise is that goes kind of to the back part of the women's locker room, and there, there's a huge area that they said no one ever touches that we would block off. And turn that into a simulator. That it would be yeah, in addition, if we cleared those lockers, we could just put hitting base. So during the winter, you can still hit balls. Cool. We do want to utilize the space, but it's huge. It's a huge locker room area. Originally, I think Roy had designated that as where Jesse and I's office were going to be, but it's too dungeonous. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's con it's brick walls all the way around. And we'd be here a lot. <laughs> we, we do have plans for it, but down the line. Any other business? I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I second it. All in favor? Uh -huh. All right. Six thirty, ready. <laughs> hey, Troy. Yeah, I was going to say. Hey, Troy. Yeah. Earlier, he was like, Do you have any thoughts, Jesse? And I was like, I just talked.